Good morning. I'm Pastor Ted Trailer at Olive Baptist Church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's a marvelous morning. I'm on top of our worship space. Uh, we can't be inside, so we started to come on the top side this morning. We're here at the foot of the cross that illuminates this corner at uh, Olive and Davis, uh, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to be here for a few minutes together this morning, read the Word of God together, then we'll pray over our region, asking God's blessing. And then later in the day at 9.30, 11 o'clock, I'll be preaching from the last chapter of the Gospel of John and sharing that with our worship team, 9.30, 11 o'clock. Hope you'll join us right there. But thanks for tuning our way uh, this morning. And I want you to hear the word of the Lord uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28 where we find the scripture says, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Just as he said, Come see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, to these ladies, Do not be afraid. Go and take my word to my brethren to leave for Galilee. And there they will see me. Then we find that the disciples did indeed hear the word, and they left for Galilee. They proceeded there to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when he saw them, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Dear friend, this morning, Resurrection Sunday, the tomb is empty. People are talking a lot about church houses being empty, but the real issue today is that the tomb is empty. And because the tomb is empty, I want to simply leave you with three thoughts before we pray over our region today. The tomb is empty. Therefore, number one, Jesus is alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He's on the throne of grace. He's praying for you and praying for me. The tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Whether you are in the middle of a storm, a virus, a difficulty, whatever you're in, I'm telling you, Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. Number two, while the tomb is empty, I want you to understand out of this passage, fear is rebuked. Four times in that 28th chapter, we find fear, 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 fear. The angel was the first one to say it. He looked to Mary Magdalene and said to Mary, Fear not. Just a few paces later when she was leaving the tomb, she would meet Jesus Christ. And Jesus, risen from the dead, looked at Mary and said, Fear not. And the Bible says she left. Left her fear and left with great joy. Hey, I want to encourage you today. The tomb is empty. Fear not. Fear has been rebuked. And I know some of you are scared about your job today. Fear not. Some of you are concerned about your health. Fear not. Some of you are concerned about eternity. If you'll trust the Lord, I encourage you. Fear 
not. The tomb is empty, therefore Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty, fear has been rebuked. And then lastly, the tomb is empty and a commission has been given. Jesus said to you, he said to me, all authority has been given unto me. Can you imagine the authority? Just think of authorities. I've, I've been up here on the roof this morning. The ambulance has gone by. I've seen the police officers go by. There are all kinds of authority. Jesus says he has all authority on earth and in heaven. The reason he has authority in heaven is because the tomb is empty. The reason he has authority here on earth is because the tomb is empty. He is risen from the dead and he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go, make disciples, share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ with all that you know, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm standing here on the top of Olive Baptist Church on the roof today, standing here by this cross that is illuminated every night you go. And I, I've had story after story after story come to me over these 20 years since we put this building here. And I ran into a lady the other day. She told me, she said, Pastor, my father is the man who put that cross together. He's the one who welded that and, and put it up on top of that building. We began to talk a little bit about the cross. Never will I forget the Marine pilot who called me one day to tell me his story about this cross. He said, Pastor, it was a foggy, foggy, foggy night, and I was coming in trying to get over to the hospital to land, and he said, I, I could not, I, I could not see. And we got lower and lower and lower, and he said, finally, I saw the cross on top of, he called it my church, on top of Olive Baptist Church. He said, there at your church, I could see the cross, and I knew exactly where I was when I saw the cross, and I got down to where I needed to be. And he looked at me, and he said, Pastor, whatever you do, never let the light go out on the cross on the top of Olive Baptist Church. That is our commission. We are to keep the light on the cross. Jesus, high and lifted up, high and lifted up. And when he's lifted up, he draws men, women, boys, and girls unto himself. The tomb is empty. Therefore, Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. Fear has been rebuked. The tomb is alive. Therefore, a commission has been given. Now, this morning, as we gather here for a few moments on what's called Easter, I like Resurrection Sunday, I want us to pray four prayers today. And I want us to pray over the region of Northwest Florida. First of all, we're going to turn and look here at the hospital over at uh, West Florida Hospital. Uh, there's so many of our people that are at work there today. This morning, before I came up here, I went into my office and got my mail from the weekend. I had a note from one of the men of our church. His wife works as a nurse. He said, Pastor, please pray. Please pray for my wife. We, we love you. We, we thank God for you, but pray for these that are working in the hospital. So this morning, I want you to join me, and let's pray for those at West Florida, Sacred Heart, Baptist, over at Gulf Breeze, all of our hospitals across the region that are struggling with this virus. Let's pray. Well, what great workers. I, I was a part of being on the front line praying and encouraging those nurses at the shift change the other night. Come in, oh, they were weeping, thanking God. Say a good word to a doctor or a nurse. I've texted my doctor a couple of times this week and just said, thanks for being there and helping people. I encourage you. Let's pray together this morning. You join me there in your heart, your home, your car, wherever you may be this morning. I want you to pray. Let's spend a moment praying for the health care workers. Father, in Jesus' name, I, I bring the medical personnel of Northwest Florida unto you. I pray, Father, and thank you uh, for my good friend, Mark Faulkner, down at Baptist today. Thank you. He's one of our deacons here. And I pray your favor to be on Mark and all of the others that lead these hospitals. I pray for that one attending the bedside today. I pray, Father, for doctors that walk in and out. I pray you'll keep them safe whole and free from this coronavirus. We dedicate our medical workers to you today and pray your favor on them in Jesus' name, amen. 
Now there's a second prayer I want us to pray today. From this rooftop as we look across over here, we, we can see the tower at the University of West Florida. And as we uh, think about it, out here in the front is our college building, but over here past the cross is the University of West Florida, our Argo friends. And we're praying for revival to come on the campus of West Florida. I want to spend a moment today praying that God would bring revival into that coming generation uh, that's there so vibrant, so uh, alive. Let's pray together this morning and just believe with me for revival on that campus. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray uh, for the University of West Florida, for their leadership, for their administration, for their coaches. Lord, I thank you for those men and women. And Lord, I pray today for the student body of the University of West Florida. On this resurrection day, I pray we'll see revival come on that campus in the days to come. Bless our own college ministry here and scores of other churches that do it. And I pray, Lord, your blessing to be on that place. God, send revival and let it begin right here on that campus. In Jesus' name, amen. And there's a third prayer I want to pray, and I want to ask the camera to follow me over here. You can't see uh, the building, but just across the way here, just across uh, there is Fair Pass School. Oh, our schools are struggling. Oh, we've all been, uh, we, we've had a fun time with uh, all of these mamas and daddies having to uh, teach their own kids. Uh, I had a middle schooler not long ago call me and said, Pastor, you know a lot about college football, don't you? I said, well, I talk like I do. He said, well, I want to see if I can get the transfer portal. I really don't like my teacher at my house. Is there? <laughs> and I said, I don't think you can transfer from your mom and daddy. Boy, these mamas and daddies are struggling, but school teachers, thank God for them. I want us to pray over our school teachers today and just ask the favor of God to be on them. You join me uh, right there where you are today, and let's pray. Father... In Jesus' name, I pray today for our schools. Lord, they want to get back. Uh, they, they want to be able to have school, but Lord, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. And I, I pray for mamas and daddies and teach. I pray for uh, men and women that are teaching online to our boys and girls. Bless them. Help the students have ears to hear and minds to learn. Have the teachers to be creative so that they can bless these kids. And I pray, God, your blessing and favor uh, on the school system. I pray for Malcolm Thomas uh, here in Escambia County. Bless my dear friend and use him. For Mr. Rosnick over in uh, Santa Rosa, we pray, God, give them wisdom so they know how to lead and to take our kids where they need be. We love you now. In Jesus' name, we pray for schools. Amen. One last thing I want to pray for. Uh, Bobby, follow me with that camera, and I want us to look right over here. I can see all kind of businesses up and down this busy corridor uh, of uh, Olive Road uh, as it goes, and uh, there are restaurants that uh, need our help. Uh, there are places where we need to uh, encourage people. Some are really hurting today about uh, employment, having to lay people off. But as I look here, uh, although I can see the Golden Arches and Denny's across there and Taco Bell and La Hacienda and the new Circle K and uh, just on and on and on, those businesses are here. And they're all over. As I look to my left, there's downtown, the businesses that are there, uh, out across the other. They're just people that need to be blessed. And so today I want you to pray for the business people of our region that the resurrected Lord would be their sufficiency during these days. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I, I pray for business owners. Bless them, encourage them, and I pray, God, that you'll strengthen. I thank you, Father, for uh, our government coming alongside of them with these short-term loans and grants, and I pray, Father, they'll get over the hump and that we would see uh, a vibrant economy return to our region. Bless our mayor today. I, I pray for uh, Grover that you'll meet his need. For all of our county commissioners, we pray, Father, you'll help them uh, as they look after our region. We love you, and we pray, Father, your blessing on these that labor among us day by day by day. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now, I want to thank you for coming and spending a moment with me. I'm not quite done. Just one other thing I, I want to do. I'm standing on the roof of Olive Baptist Church. I've been the pastor here come October 30 years. I remember we built this building and all the other things that God's allowed us to do here. I had a letter in the mail this day when I opened my mail this morning. I had a letter from an 82-year-old preacher. He said, Pastor, thank you for being online because our little church over here in Conecuh County, Alabama, we're not able to be online, but we've been watching Olive and we've been watching other churches that are online and you've encouraged us. And I want you to encourage the church today. I visited one of my neighbors yesterday. She said, Pastor, I'm not able to go to my church, but I've been watching yours online. Well, this online deal, none of us like it, but it may be God's doing a work for the church. So I want you to encourage your pastor today. Whoever your pastor is, write him a note, send him a text. Uh, just encourage him. He needs that kind of blessing in your, well, just in your demeanor. Go, Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. Now I'm going to throw my cameraman a curve. I'm going to walk back around this way and I want to see the cross one more time and then we're going to be done. I want you to pray for the church today. The cross. Thank God for the cross. Uh, those of you that are in the parking lot, if you're listening on 91.7 or you're looking on your hand device, if you believe Jesus risen from the dead today, blow your horn out there in the parking lot. I want to hear you that you'll believe in the cross. If you can hear me today, just toot that horn. That'd be a good thing. You'll bless us today. Amen. Uh, while you help us uh, here this morning, thanks for coming and gathering in the parking lot and blowing that horn. Yeah, sound off. Blow that horn. Jesus is risen from the dead and the cross is high and lifted up. We love him today. We thank God that he died for us. But more than anything, we thank God that he was raised from the dead. The tomb is empty, but there's no need for your heart to be empty today. Let Jesus live within you and through you, and let's continue to be the church. I love you, God bless you, and happy Resurrection Sunday.